Well, amen. All right. Praise God. I'm Apostle Dr. Linda, and welcome to Covenant Life Church. And we want to welcome you tonight uh, to the Apostle Bob and Sharon Parks uh, Deliverance Conference. We are so happy to have them here tonight. Amen. And they're going to be back with us on Sunday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Amen. So let's just pray. Father, we just come before you right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you, Father, for this night. We thank you, Father. Uh, for them. We thank you, Lord, for the conference. Lord, we believe God, people are going to get saved, healed, and delivered. Yes, Father. Amen. And Father, we stir them up in the prophetic and the apostolic telling. Right now, Lord, give us ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus. All right, I want to welcome Apostle Bob and Sharon Parks, and uh, we've known them for over 20 years. They are powerful ministers. Amen. They're ordained with Christian International, uh, founded by Dr. Bill Hammond, and they serve as the founding directors for the Healing and Deliverance Ministry of CI. They travel nationally and internationally, uh, training up deliverance and healing teams. And uh, Apostle Sharon has authored four books. Wow. Passport to Freedom, Breaking the Cycle of Abuse, Test of Testimony, and Making Your Faith Bigger Than Your Fear. All of these are available on Amazon, amen, or through CI. Their website tonight is Isaiah624ministries.org, uh, amen. And if you're so inclined uh, tonight, please go online to their website and sew in, amen. You can also sew in through our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. There's a donate button, amen. And you can sew in, and whatever comes in, we're going to send to them. Amen? Okay, I got to interject the sewing thing on our website hasn't been working, so they can just do the, you know, sew it to you. Okay. Okay, fine. All right, and send it to Covenant Life Church. Yeah. And we'll make sure that they get it. Amen. Okay, without further ado, we're going to turn it over to Bob and Sharon Parks. Amen. Go for it. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Apostle Linda. Apostle Dr. Linda <laughs> and Jeff, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, I think we've been doing this for at least 15 years, haven't we, Linda? Apostle yes. Linda. Yeah. And uh, so we um, are blessed uh, to have the networking and the friendship. I love Kingdom Connections. And uh, we met uh, shortly after 9-11 and uh, uh, Apostle Dr. Linda had written her book, um, The um, Pentagon, Pentagon Miracle. Miracle. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pentagon Miracle uh, about her 9-11 experience. And um, and I just, um, I, I've been telling that, I told it recently, I'm last week and I was in Wisconsin ministry and I said about our friendship, I said, well, next week and I'll be in uh, ministering um, uh, for DC. And I said, uh, that Colonel Linda, because she's a retired Colonel, uh, I said, she used to, you might remember this, uh, Linda, that uh, you would say, hey, I'm at the airport, I'm being deployed to Iraq or whatever. I go, I go I'm at the airport too, I'm being deployed to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> So we always joke about that because we are in God's army and um, whether it's in the natural military or uh, in the spiritual uh, with God. And part of what we do is deliverance and healing. And uh, we got launched in this ministry in 99. If you want to tell the story real quick about that. And yeah, we uh, ended up going to Colorado Springs for a conference with Peter Wagner and, uh, Chuck Pierce and uh, the funny part, I'll just do that first. Uh, we're, we went expecting, they were expecting 300 people and it turned out to be thousands of people. 3,000 3, people <laughs> at that first world conference on deliverance. And uh, coming from CI, uh, uh, Peter Wagner knew, well, the, of course they're all great friends. And, and Chuck um, Pierce. And Chuck Pierce. So they asked us to be on the deliverance teams and we said, sure. And, uh, and they said, we have 10 teams and that sounded great. You know, 300 people, 10 teams. And then we got there and Chuck said, they got good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is, well, the well, one anyway, that they said, we expected uh, 300 and we got 3000 and the bad news is we still only have 10 teams. So, uh, 
but yeah. that was God setting us up because we had received several prophetic words about deliverance. And my thing was, you know, I'm a prophet, apostle, and uh, no, but I think I still had some fear. <laughs> and um, so anyways, but God showed us how moving in our gifts to do the quicker work for the end time revival and the way we teach and train. And I know, okay, first of all, I want to just do a disclaimer. We do not knock other deliverance ministers. You know, how they want to minister is up to them and what the Holy Lord. Spirit. Yeah. And the Lord shows them. But, um, and I always joke that we have enough demons to go around for all of us. And I really mean it, but people think um, that, you know, I'm saying it just has to be our way and all that. And it's like the Lord showed us moving in the gifts, uh, word and knowledge, discern the spirits. I don't ask the person, right? We don't ask the person anything. And within minutes, people are set free. And uh, so and we launched the ministry at Christian National Halloween night. 1999 and it's been going strong and so we have relocated to delaware but we are relocating back home yay so this is house sells <laughs> i actually talked to bishop hammond today so and apostles tom and jane have been praying and already talked to them so um but uh what so we have trained up teams at the local house of vision church uh, the phd teams uh, and people come from all over on Friday nights to get set free. So in the meantime, while we're in Delaware, we've been traveling all over, uh, not since COVID international, but in many, many states um, in the last few months, so where have I been? Arizona, Wisconsin, California, everything, and training and activating in this awesome ministry. Mark 16, 17 says, Yes, in my name, I will cast out demons, mm -hmm. basically, and it goes a these signs, deep. yeah, these, these signs will follow those who believe. believe. In my name, I will cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, and uh, pretty much covers it all in that in that scripture. And uh, uh, and I just want to go back real quick to Colin. Uh, I'm sorry to uh, the first World Conference on Deliverance. That was the couple days after Columbine happened. And uh, that's one of the main reasons the students were at the conference, the professors, the te teachers, everyone from, from the Columbine area uh, that was involved with that, uh, you know, lost loved ones and everything else. That's why that, that conference probably tripled more than, uh, well, not tripled, but 10 times more than uh, was expected. So it was a big, big, a uh, group of people from from the college and, and everything else when that happened. Yeah, because there was a lot of fear uh, and people just didn't have the answers. And if you all remember, even President Clinton said he thought demons caused that. And so the way the Lord um, showed us to do deliverance is to we bind manifestations. Does that mean they never manifest? No, but you know, Jesus told the demons to be quiet and get out. And I know there's times demons do manifest. People might say, oh, my neck is hurting or my head is hurting. Oh, I feel like I'm going to throw up or I feel, you know, this tearing in my chest, whatever. But then we believe we have all, the word says we have all authority, right? All power. So that leaves the enemy none. So we take authority over the tearing, ripping, harming, and we tell it to come on out. But people sometimes misunderstand that. And they think we say, you know, we're coming against, you know, manifestations because there were ones that did manifest. And I said, no, they do try to manifest, but, but we refuse to let them have any show. I say they try to put on a show. I've done conferences where they manifest and all eyes are on that manifestation. And um, so then also people, you know, talk to demons. I don't. Okay. Once again, I want everyone to hear this statement. We do not knock other deliverance ministers that do that. That's what they believe. Then they can do that. But God showed us 
to that he would this why it's called prophetic healing deliverance we're listening to the holy spirit and casting out uh recently a pastor said to me wow you got like 100 did did somebody tell you this i said no it's the gift of discernment and the way when we're ministering i just trust the lord that he's going to show us what is there right bob That's right. And, and we don't have to um it's not like a striving thing. It's like, just let it flow. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. So prophesying, we cast it out. Then we fill them up and seal it. And I ministered, and um, I was on a Zoom call, I think a couple weeks ago, several weeks ago with the um, dear lady from Virginia. And uh, she said, what countries have you been to? And I was trying to name all my countries. And then later I forgot, oh, I forgot Portugal. Oh, I forgot Finland because <laughs> I've been to so many countries. But it's the same demon in those countries. And we all should be casting out devils. We should all, you know, getting people saved, filled with the Holy Spirit and setting them free, especially all the stuff that's going on in our nation of all places, you know? Um, so, um, and as, as Sharon was just saying that, I just want to mention this. We were in Mobile, Alabama uh, many years ago uh, to Assembly of God Church. And the past, we taught this about uh, deliverance when you get to uh, accept the Lord as your savior and da, 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 da. And we should have deliverance right after it. That was kind of what we taught. Uh, so the people don't lose their their uh, salvation. salvation. And uh, at the end, the pastor had a an a roll, a roll call, an, an, a altar altar call, <laughs> and uh, we had uh, I don't know 30, 40 people came up, and he was he was kind of funny. He said, "Okay, put your teaching to use," and we had a team with us too, uh, a few other people, and that we trained, and uh, that we got them saved, and everything else, and and uh, walk in deliverance. So that's what we should be doing. And that's what we should be looking for because otherwise you could lose the people again, you can get them saved. Uh, but if you don't have like a follow-up or a deliverance follow-up or whatever, they, they possibly, most probably, they'll go back in the world again and say, you know, you don't have anything or, or even, honey, just even sickness and infirmity, you know, dying before their time. So that's yeah. why it's so important to bring up generational curses and those things, you know. Right. Um, yeah. I really felt, I told um, Apostle Linda today, I really felt, because uh, Apostle Bob said, uh, you know, because we teach different things and, and teach, you know, deliverance. We call this advanced deliverance, but... Um, you know, he said, I think we should do a focus tonight. And he was talking about, I forget what you said, forgiveness or something. I said, yeah, that's good. But the more I prayed about it today in tongues, I felt like God was saying to address the spirit of fear. And it's funny because I've been dealing with some fear the last few days. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's like, you know, uh, here's, here's my latest book make your faith bigger than your fears okay make faith big and it's funny because i told the lord you know i still struggle it's not within but it always tries to come without you know um it uh tries to just stop me like today was trying to hit me a couple of times and last night a little bit and i just start to take authority over it so sometimes it's it's standing and then stand some more right That's right uh and that's what and so the fear thing because um there was just a family situation it was trying to bring some fear and i was like jesus you know and uh, just those vain imaginations there's a chapter in my book on vain imaginations where the enemy comes and says oh no this is happening or that's happening and and it's like wow okay you know <laughs> and uh so i want to go into that a uh, little bit of that teaching and then we're going to break that off and i'm also going to go through the prayer of trauma. I may have done this before, not sure, but it's always good to break off trauma because trauma isn't a one-time thing. We, you know, we face trauma a lot in our lives and it, it's like, uh, it's just not like, okay, well, I had some trauma, no big deal. It's like, it's a very strong spirit that partners with the spirit of fear. All right. Um, all right. So, the, uh, let's start with the definition of fear. Fear is an unpleasant emotion 
caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, painful, or a threat. Fear can also bring thoughts of what if, or a strong feeling of impending doomed, described as the sense that something awful is about to occur or that your loved one are about to die. I was telling my youngest son, Kevin, last night, I said, this thought was coming, and he goes, Mom, you know, that's that spirit of death. And I said, no, I'm rebuking it. I mean, it doesn't have any place, but it tries death, fear, trauma. They all try to partner together. Yeah. So, but this is where we have to let faith arrive. Amen. And it's an, it's not an, always an easy thing to do. Uh, in Jude, it talks about, Paul talks about contending for our faith. Okay. Well, guess what? <laughs> We have to contend and speak the word over whatever situation is in the natural and see our supernatural God turn it around. You know, it's almost like the enemy knew uh, that God was going to tell us to teach on fear tonight. And like I said, some things were happening this week and I just had to rebuke, rebuke, you know, it was like, um, uh, I think Monday I came home and I had a little bit of a sinusy thing going. Well, I ministered, you know, a lot last weekend and I had the flights coming and going and uh, I was in Wisconsin and they have good uh, dairy, eh? So I had some dairy, <laughs> some good ice cream. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> Some ice cream and cheese. They call them cheese curds. And so she all the, she, no cheese. And yeah. Football they do anyway. Yeah. Well, no shit. The, yeah. The the pastor said she said more cheese heads, but I had cheese curds. I had more dairy than I've had in a long time because I do a lot of oat milk. But anyway, so I think that added to the sinus thing. So I came home and uh, so Monday and Tuesday didn't feel that great. And so what do you think the devil said to me? COVID. You got COVID. <laughs> so two days I felt crummy, but then it went away and I'm better. <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. But it was battling that thought because I have had COVID before. So, um, co you know, it's real. But I try to be very cave. Uh, cave. I try to be very safe and um, everything. But um, anyway, but with travel, sometimes you never know. But always, you know, staying in that faith. But it was like just little stuff. I didn't even tell him that, you know. Devil's tell me I'm going to have COVID. I'm like, how would I have COVID, you know? So you have to uh, war against those things and contend, you know. Jude 1.3 says this. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints and yes you know paul is probably talking about you know our faith walk but i'm talking about not just salvation i'm talking about faith to believe everything that god has said you know john 4 18 says i think it's first john 4 18 there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear because fear has torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love and we know that um i tell the story about when um i had a lot of uh they thought i had cancer the second time i had cancer in 202 in my leg and then 203 they you know they thought i had cancer a bunch of tumors and things but they were all non-cancers but then they found a lump in my left breast not or mass actually showed up on the mammogram and the ultrasound so um you know that fear that weekend before the surgery again two weeks a day i was like on the operating table and the devil tried to tell me you know they're you know you're gonna die it's cancer it's gonna spread everywhere and my husband said what did you say devil couldn't kill me right, right. <laughs> he said the devil can not kill you you know so um anyway but that weekend was really battling through fear all right um anyways it, it, yeah so but it's getting it's getting to that place of faith of believing and standing no matter what okay a a w tozer he said love cast out fear for when we know we are loved we're not afraid. Whoever has God's perfect love, fear is gone out of the universe for him. 
Wow, <laughs> that's quite a statement that Tosa made out of the universe, right? But it's true. Fear has gone so completely that it's not even in our sight. It's not even around us because there's no fear in love. So actually when we have that love, you know, it gets, it pushes fear out because fear, the whole thing, it has to do with punishment. And I always say this, I was raised a Quaker and I, I found that if you've been raised in any denomination, sometimes we feel like it's a works mentality or fear mentality. And so as a Quaker, you know, I was, it was very strict, you know, not breaking the Sabbath and all those kind of things. Um, but believing that if we did miss it, maybe, god you know would kill us or something so that's what's reinforced some of the things that the enemy's thrown at my mind you know so and another thing i found out is here we are apostle bob and i are the founders we actually birthed uh, deliverance the christian national uh we're the founders of the deliverance ministry for ci and for apostle tom and jane and bishop and um you know, shame would say, and thing, you know, shame comes in too with fear. Do you believe that? You think so? I think so too. Uh, I remember, you know, going through some stuff and fear, you know, had a lot of family issues and things. And the enemy's like, oh, you know, if you reach out for help, you're going to seem weak and like you don't have enough faith. And, and so, you know, then the spirit of shame partners with, with the fear and gets us to isolate. I found that out. Yep. And, uh, you know, when I need help, see, the enemy said, why are you going to Apostle Tom and Jane for prayer? What will they think? You know, you're struggling so much and, you know, you're such a bother. But sometimes we have to do just a simple thing like the Lord did. Shut up. <laughs> Except he said, be quiet in the word. <laughs> but sometimes we say, shut up. <laughs> so um, let me tell you what shame is. Shame's a painful feeling that's a mix of regret and self-hatred. The synonym of shame is reproach, contempt, discredit, humiliation, and disgrace. And so we know shame entered the Garden of Eden. I'm not going to go right there now. But, you know, um, shame, when combined with fear, it convinces you that you're guilty of lack of faith and you don't measure up. So therefore, we live in this tormented world of fear without having somebody pray for us, right? So the key to defeating this spirit is to call your spiritual leaders, as I did with Apostles Tom and Jane, 1,000 times, <laughs> and let them lead me through, uh, you know, breaking off fear and set me free. See, we don't have to leave, live this alone and handle this alone. Uh, once again, get help from your spiritual covering. Amen. Um, you know what? One thing I found out about getting free about Sabon is when you get free, the devil pursues you. Yeah. Just like what happened. Everybody's watched the, uh, the, the movie that's always on in Easter with Charleston Heston, right? The Easter story, whatever it was called. <laughs> but how uh, they, the Egyptians followed the children of Israel all the way to the parting of the Red Sea. Yeah, all the way to the parting of the Red Sea. And sometimes that's what the devil does. He follows us right up to the time of our freedom. And even, you know, you're free and then he keeps trying to come after you again. And so that's part of the contending. That's part of the standing. That's part of all that we you know, have to do to maintain our freedom. I would say this too. I don't know if you feel this way, Apostle Bob, but casting the devil out is kind of easy, okay? But walking it out, staying free, that's the hard part. That's, right? that's definite, yes. To, to walk it out, walking it out is, is hard uh, many times. Uh, because the enemy is right there. You're coming back. You're coming back. You're coming back. And uh, all your friends. I, I, I'll just use this for, for an example. Anyway, you can cast out uh, uh, drugs and alcohol. Just simple. Not It's not simple. But things like that. 
and uh, you're free. As soon as you walk out the door, there's your friends uh, waiting. Hey, I got cigarettes, not cigarettes, I got drugs, I got alcohol. Let's go to this party tonight. You know, the, the devil is right there. As soon as you walk out that door, so that's where your strength, you have to be strong enough to say, nope, not me. And, uh, and that's hard for a lot of people to say. And you may see them back for deliverance next week again. That's right. Yeah. And that's what we do say. Um, you know, people need to maintain their freedom. You know, um, once you're set free, it's the walking it out. We tell people they have to walk it out at least two months of renewing their mind, being submitted, tithing, all those things they need to do uh, to keep themselves free. And learning to say no and resisting the devil and he, he will flee. flee. Yes. Amen and amen. All right, Exodus 14, 13 says, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you. Amen. Today, for the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Right. And 2 Timothy 1, 7, we all know this scripture, New Testament, this, this is the New King James Version. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Amen. 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 Uh, Apostle Jane and many people, I've heard other people say it too, but Apostle Jane always says, courage, uh, Jane Hammond, courage is not the absence of fear. It means you stand in faith, even though it looks bad. <laughs> We say the enemy comes in like a Goliath and tries to intimidate us. I'm not going to read those scriptures, but in 1 Samuel 17, 33 to 51, actually, I have no. Apostle, I'm sorry, Apostle Bob, <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a dog talking. Yeah. Okay, let's mute it one minute. Okay, Bob. Okay, I'm going to have you read that. And go ahead and read this and this. And he's going to read a scripture and I'm going to take care of the dog. <laughs> then Saul said, 1 Samuel 17, 33. Then Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth while he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Verse 36, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted hit the enemies of God, of the living God, the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistines. And Saul said to David, go, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his garments and put on a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with armor. David girded his sword over his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. So David said to Saul, I, I cannot go with like, with." I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. And David took them off. He took his stick in his hand and, cho and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had even in his pouch, and, and his sling was in his hand. And he approached the Philistine. Then the Philistine came on and approached David with the shield bearer in front of him. When Philistine looked and saw when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth uh, and ruddy with a handsome appearance. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, come to me and I will give you flesh for the birds of, for, of the sky and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword a spear and a javelin, and I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies of Israel, for whom you have taunted. Amen. 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 So it's that, that, that story, it, it brings me back many, many on here today, or maybe some on here, not many, uh, used to go to Sunday school. 
and uh, the Sunday, the churches and Sunday school when you used to go as that was one of the big teachings in Sunday school about David and Goliath and, and there was yeah. others, of course, but that as reading as I was reading that brings me back to the old many old old days when we did have Sunday school teachers and uh, teaching us those stories. Yes, and it was funny because as I was, um, you know, asking the Lord about different things to, uh, that we're going to say tonight and all that, um, I had already put, um, you know, this I think is in my book too, but the voice of truth tells a different story. And so the voice of the Lord, all right, and what the word says from Genesis to Revelation, that's the truth, not what you're going through. That's what we stand on. Okay. And uh, so um, anyways, uh, at the same time I was doing this, I go, Bob, listen to that. There's that song. I hadn't heard that because it's an old song. The voice of truth tells a different story. And uh, I go, there it is. God is really saying to, to emphasize for you all that are watching tonight that God's the truth. What God says, his voice is the truth, not what the enemy is saying to you, okay? So the situation uh, with our son, Daniel, you know, he died twice in one day, with sudden death cardiac arrest in 2017. I just returned from Europe and uh, from ministering in Lithuania. And, uh, but the, the prognosis, the second time when he died that day, they said they couldn't get him back, okay? So that's that's not the truth though. So, so the voice of truth tells a different story. What did the voice of truth say? The voice of truth said, my son shall live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. I had the same thing with my oldest son, Dal, and Linda knows because she was in ICU with our son, Kevin, same thing, life support six days, didn't think he'd live, but the voice of truth, tells a different story. So I'm prophesying over you all today, or actually truth says you shall Amen. overcome. The voice of truth says you shall walk in victory. The voice of truth says your body shall be healed. Amen. 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 So, you know, um, when was that? A couple years ago, I'm trying to think about two or three years ago, it was December and we were visiting a family member and we were at a little cafe and I was drinking a coffee, a lot, actually a latte. And the Lord said to me, just trust me. Remember that? I said, this is so weird. God's just saying, just trust me. And I said, of course I trust you. You know, just trust me, have faith. That's what he said. I said, of course, I trust you. Of course, I have faith. So when I, oh, I know when it was. Yes. And when I walked into the hospital room and saw my son on life support, guess what God brought back to my memory? Do you remember back in December <laughs> when I said, just trust me, <laughs> just have faith? <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord. So the word trust, it's a noun and it means reliance on the integrity, the strength, the ability, the surety of a person or thing. Confidence, confident expectation of something. A person, this is for um, definition three, a person or thing on whom or on which one relies, amen. And this is what trust is about, you know we we expect I, I love that when it says confident expectation of something i mean i have confident expectation that no matter what it looks like all hell can be breaking loose and i have confident expectation that my god is going to come through amen amen, amen. all right i'm gonna read a few more things actually uh Tassel bob i'll have you read that we're gonna do Remember, it's about stay, tonight. How do, We're giving you the antidote to fear. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Some script, scriptures that we have here on trust. 2 Samuel 22 to 31. 2 Samuel 22 to 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. And Psalm 71, uh, 71, 5. 
for you are my that's only the passion translation passion translation you are my only hope lord i've hung on to you trusting in you for all my life psalms 50 15 honor me by trusting in me in your day of trouble cry aloud to me and i will be there to rescue you first corinthians 2 to 2 5 for god intended that your faith not be established on man's wisdom but by trusting in his almighty power with trusting the lord comes grace trust in the lord comes grace amen exodus thirty three sixteen. for with wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. It is not that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, and I, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Amen. 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 So, you know, now we went from faith to having grace, but it's mostly about trust, trust, trusting, okay? And, uh, you know, we, we we have to trust that everywhere we go, God is with us, right? Everywhere we turn around, God is with us. And um, so many times, as I said, that's why we have to make God's voice louder than the voice of the enemy, is we hear the devil's voice louder, right? The Amen. enemy's voice louder. And in, in circumstances, I mean, you, know, you can hear the natural, like I, I've heard with my sons and grandchildren, the natural diagnosis, but I know what God said. I know it is always his will to heal. Amen. So even though they could say, uh, you know, the doctors to the best of their ability, there's nothing we can do. You know, even when people get reports of, of diseases and cancer and all that. And um, I remember when I got diagnosed with cancer uh, in my leg in 202, I remember the fear because that fear gripped me because, you know, it's the C word, you know, and you have all the, uh, what people say about cancer, you know, they, they open you up and it spreads everywhere and all that. And my husband's late wife died of cancer. But when I had the mass in my left breast, you didn't doubt at all. Oh, you need to tell the whole story about that. Okay, so they went in to operate <laughs> with the mass in my left breast. They went in to operate and when they went in, it was gone, there was nothing there. The mass has, it was disappeared. And, uh, and the, we, we said to the doctor, well, what happened? or something like that. And the doctor was at a loss of words. The doctor was not a Christian doctor and uh, he didn't give credit to God, but all he did was mumble like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we didn't, he didn't have a, he didn't, he didn't know what to say <laughs> when we brought that, what, well, what did you do? What happened? Did you just do the surgery or not? And, was it there? He said, no, he goes, when we went in, there was nothing there, but I left a titanium locator because in other words, he just didn't believe what he was seeing, but it was not there, even though uh, that was a documented miracle because yeah. it showed up on the mammogram and the ultrasound, but when they went in, it was gone. Yay. Then, yeah. <laughs> Yay, God, right? So, but um, my son, Daniel said something to me one time because I was, I've actually had panic attacks years and years ago. But he said to me, Mom, you know, most of the things people fear never happen. Oh, my, that's so much wisdom. But there's also scripture that says the things we fear shall come upon us. So I tried to not have that fear because that's what the word says. But Isaiah 26 3 is my favorite scripture. I mean, that's what I stand on. That's what I live by. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee. Um, that scripture God gave me when our oldest son had the flushing disease. And it was almost a month. It did, it was just literally eating his body away. And, and um, it didn't want to just stop, you know, just kept on. And uh, so just all kinds of stuff. So after about almost a month, I was getting a little battle weary with it. And I went back to the hotel and I had a vision and not a godly vision. I saw my son in a casket and the devil said to me, you know, you know what they said, you better call the family back in again. Because we had called them in at the beginning, right? When, I don't know, like one, 
two days in the hospital because he was they went and did a surgery and just kept removing parts of his body that didn't have the fleshy and disease and and uh i know pastors Ra apostles tom and jane around town bishop was but gelshian um apostle gelshian came and he prayed with us but they said call the family in because they didn't think he'd make it but there's that voice of truth again <laughs> that tells a different story <laughs> so anyway when, uh, so i saw that vision in odell and uh so it was just like fear was gripping my heart and so what i did is i had kenneth and gloria copeland's healing cds i put them on i now have found um a youtube it's uh john hagee healing scriptures and he actually does deliverance scriptures and so i use that not just for me but for people when i go visit them in the hospital or uh you know i say hey hey just put this on your phone and listen to this let it permeate the atmosphere in your hospital room and we've had people that have had like uh, uh, just tumors and whatever and just be healed just listening because it's the word and the word doesn't come back void yeah so anyways back to Dow. so um i you know put those healing cities on then i stopped it and then i put on worship music and because praise silence is the enemy amen the devil does not like to stay around apostle bob when you're praising god it it hurts his ears <laughs> so i like to praise the lord and the other thing i did is i read healing scriptures out loud and i also just reminded the devil that that was my seed and you cannot kill my seed amen amen, amen. all right um i believe and <clears throat> i've been saying this the last few months actually so i know a lot of us have lost things during the covid season okay uh, and uh sometimes that isolation brings the fear because we have more time and we're not traveling or whatever and we're thinking about things all right and that's why the word says take every thought captive okay so i want to talk about restitution so the things the fear has brought on us it says restitution is the returning of something lost or stolen to its proper owner to return, to restore, hand back, replacement, surrender, reimbursement. So restoration means putting something back in the original form that it was created to be. But restitution <laughs> means getting it back and then some. Now at Christian International about 10 years ago, Apostle Alex Florence from Canada said that we were in a year of replevant. The word replevin is a legal ter uh, term that means getting back things that will illegally that were illegally stolen from us. So how many during this past two years during COVID season, I guess it's really a year and a half, not quite two years, but how many have felt that you have lost some things? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And that it, that it's stolen. So okay. So we don't want things just restored, but I say we want the three R's. We want restoration, restitution, and replevin. Y'all need to encourage yourself in the Lord. You know how you do that? David encouraged himself in the Lord, okay, in Psalms 142. But you need to write down some things you've lost during COVID and demand payback. Amen. I say a hundredfold, and there's a scripture actually that says a thousandfold. So why not? My husband and I left Canada seven years ago this month. I was telling Bishop that today that, you know, I said, we're coming home. And I said, I believe, so September's not over yet, but that when we had to leave Canada and walk away from the healing training center we had in prince edward island and all that god was doing and all the miracles he did like terry gallant healed of cancer given 10 percent chance to live and god healed him all the training all the equipping all the wonderful things god did in the maritimes and in canada while we were there i believe it's time for some restitution apostle bob how about you amen yes we sure do we all need it yes and expect it not need it but we expect it. expect it put a demand on it that's the word right says it so we expect it yep and so and the three r's rest restoration restitution and replevin 
So it's really ours. And the devil illegally stole from us the healing center by immigration issues and us leaving. Okay. So it's time. <laughs> and then we moved to Delaware. Um, and I, I said, wow, it's only 15 hours driving to Canada. And then what happens? COVID hits. So we can't go. <laughs> so <laughs> the devil does not want us in Canada. <laughs> we still can't go today. Yep. Well, yeah. Maybe we can go, but we can't come back. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> All right. Uh, restitution. Um, I love the story about uh, Elijah and uh, there's some restitution there. But how about, um, I th I've got to find this scripture where uh, the lady, oh my goodness, I had it in here, but I might have taken it out. But the lady, um, no, you got to find it. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. My notes printed on front and back, so it kind of makes you be lost, okay? All right. But uh, anyway, let's go on. But um, the lady uh, had to give up everything. The one that Elijah prayed for her son, and he came back from the dead. And um, she um, had to leave because uh, of the famine and she was gone the Shumanite woman that's in second kings eight one to six that's where it is all right so the Shumanite woman I'm going to go into all that but she got restitution she had to leave her, her land for all those years seven years and guess what she went you know she wasn't going to get it back but when um the servant was talking to the king he said there's the woman now that, Eli you know, he wanted to know all that Elijah did. And there's the woman now that God healed her son, brought him back from the dead. And he said, he knew that she was trying to get her land back. So he said, restore all. And then some, right? Restoration, restitution, right? That's, I believe we are in that season. I was in uh, Wisconsin last week and, and a couple of times, the last few months, I thought we are in that season where things have been stolen, things have been taken. It's like uh, we went out to dinner and the thief came into our house and tried to steal stuff. But when the thief is found out, he has to give back, right? Amen. So we're saying give back. So for us, as I said, uh, seven years and uh, seven means grace. No, five is grace. Seven means what? Anybody know? Put seven up there. I know eight is new beginnings. Ah, no, seven, no, five is grace. But God is, I think it's recovery. Give back. Eight, yeah, eight, or give back. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody put give back. <laughs> that, no. Um, anyway, so we bind any confusion that's coming tonight too because i know all these things i have i had this stuff in my in me because i've had to walk out so much of this amen and i i i believe that just with the restoration he's not just going to give it back you have to arrest them you know it reminds me of the cease and desist letter god had me preach about you know uh, a cease and desist uh, it's what we uh, it's an actual legal term and a court of law issues that and a cease and desist letter tells the devil he has to stop it right because we have the bible and that's a cease and desist letter right yes <laughs> so um you know all these things god has given us and empowered us with to overcome fear mm -hmm. and to walk in that faith he says without faith it's impossible please god but sometimes you have to work to get into faith y'all when the devil's knocking at your door, you know, sounds like it'll, it's not just a knock, but he's, he's about ready to knock the door down. <laughs> you have to have faith to believe what the word says. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And you were going to say something about Freemasonry bringing. Well, even that brings fear to people. Uh, more of family members than the person that's actually in Freemasonry, because a lot of them don't even understand they think it's a religious organization, but the, the fear comes in, in the older days. It was always men, men uh, involved with Freemasonry, and he'd just leave his house in the middle of the night. 
to go to a meeting and uh, we've heard stories after stories. The wife was wondering, where's the husband going? Where's the husband going every night? And uh, brings fear that is he leaving me or what? And family, leaving the family. So it does bring fear. And even the initiations, uh, there's a lot of fear in the initiations. Uh, one is putting a gun to their head, an empty gun, and uh, hopefully. And uh, so, so that brings fear too. And I said hopefully because in New York City, many years ago, the gun had one bullet in its chamber and killed the person during the initiation. That made the headlines in all the New York newspapers and, uh, and really what Freemason me to, a, to the front of, uh, you know, what kind of an organization it really is. Yes, amen. I looked up the number seven, as Apostle Bob was saying that seven is the number of completeness and perfection. So, yeah. So this is seven years ago we left. And so I believe that God, it's completion of closing doors and walking into what God has for us. Amen. I'm, I'm not... Uh, I don't focus on numbers all the time, but I really think uh, that is significant, you know, to look at some of those things, right? And uh, it's the word and it's some things that God has said. Um, I also felt like, um, I'm just trying to mm, just sense what God is saying about those online. Actually, um, I see that some of you have problems sleeping. So right now in the name of Jesus, I bind that up. I break its power. Actually torment. Some of you have demonic dreams. I break that off in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, demonic dreams. I see somebody has been dreaming a lot about snakes. Snakes mean the enemy. I actually had one the other day um, where somebody was bitten by a snake and they were uh i was just about to go through this woodsy field and they told me don't go through there that's where the snakes are so i went okay god i'm gonna trust you on this but um but that wasn't so much a tormenting dream but i i see some of you are tormented there's some dark dreams that you're having so i break that off of you now in jesus name in the name of jesus and i also see that some of you do have panic attacks so I bind that up and I break its power and I command those panic attacks. I see heart palpitations. Uh, your mother uh, died of a heart attack. I see that. And there's uh, heart disease coming down some of your uh, father's bloodlines. I break that off too. Premature death. I break it off in Jesus name. You get anything about the fear? Well, Should even the fear that, of that, uh, all the uh, tests that you, you go through all the time with the normal blood work and uh, cholesterol and triglycerides and sugar all that, all of those sugar things sugar uh, sugar that your family sugar always sugar had, sugar had, had sugar and, sugar and you may sugar have sugar it sugar now sugar even, but uh, sugar sugar it's always sugar a fear sugar when you do get sugar it. Sugar that, um, my mom sugar. had it, my dad had it, and they died at a young age. So uh, sugar those sugar fears sugar. come upon too, all the yes. medical reports that come out. Yes, amen, amen. So all fears, we take them captive now. Yes. And Father God, we just appropriate faith to cover the fear and your love that covers fear, Father, to be released to them now in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. I just and want to add one other thing about fear. And, and if you watch the news, that's all you hear about lately is fear, fear. Now we get Philadelphia news and uh, yeah. Philadelphia daily, nightly, two, three, four shootings, murders a night, every night. Two last night, you two, told me. Two last night. And, uh, and they're right out in the open. Uh, and just for the people that know the area, Pat's Pizza. Uh, I'm sorry, Pat's, uh, uh, what do you call them? Anyway, the restaurant there, the, the, they have shootings there quite a bit. And that they're right out in the open. And uh, even what's going on in the world, the, the uh, people coming in from other countries, I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking uh, politics or getting into politics in any way. But these ones that are coming in, not, not even tested. And the reports are probably almost majority of them have COVID. And where are they going? 
that's another question. Where are they going? But uh, and they're bringing it with them. Where are they going? Political, so. <laughs> no, not political. So, but it is true. And even the fear of COVID, like I said, the devil was telling me the other day, but, you know, because I had a sinus thing for like a day and a half, and it's like, oh, no, could this be COVID? And I'm fine now. But anyway, but see, it is resisting. It is continuing to say, shut up, devil. I don't have that. But, you know, it's almost like he wants, he knocks on the door, and he wants you to open the door and take what he's saying, take uh, what is going on in the natural. Once again, people, we are supernatural beings. We Amen. have the spirit of the living God within us to overcome everything. Amen. 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 Everything. So, um, you know, God wants, uh, we cannot be cursed. Numbers 22, I think it's 3 to 18, you know, um, Balak and Balaam, right? Uh, Balaam said, um, one of the, uh, he goes, the children of God cannot be cursed, right? Mm -hmm. Because we cannot be, I can't curse them, right? Cannot curse them because God just blesses them. Exodus 1. Um, I always, I teach that a lot where the more the Israelites, uh, oppressed and made a hardship for the children of Israel, the more they grew. So the more the devil afflicts you, the more he tries to stop, guess what? The more you're going to grow. Amen. Remember numbers, right? 22. We cannot be cursed, right? Why? Because if a shadow of a king is among us, that was a song by Robert K. <laughs> I was just saying, instead of uh, reading it and saying it, you can learn the song and sing it. <laughs> <laughs> the weapons of hell will not prosper, for a shadow of a king is among us. Amen. So Numbers 23, 21. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shadow of a king is among them. That's yeah. So if God hasn't cursed us, nobody, no false prophets, right? The devil himself cannot curse us because we are blessed. Amen. Because we're children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. So there's three conditions that solid that reinforce our inability to be cursed. Three conditions. All right. One, God is with us. Amen. Amen. Two, God has not cursed us. He has blessed us. Amen. And three, there is no iniquity or wickedness among us. So if we say those three things, it's not about a religious thing of the iniquity or wickedness, right? But if we can say those three things, we can stand on the scripture, Proverbs 26.3 says the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, a curse without a cause cannot alight. Amen? Amen. And that's what I've stood on for my children, for us, and continue to declare. Amen? Amen. So, um, Apostle Bob, you want to see if anybody I'm looking for, I think, I think we should take them through a prayer to break off trauma, don't you? Amen. Yeah. So, and then um, we can do, you can leave them to the Lord, anybody that needs salvation. Okay, and then we'll do some prophecies. Okay. I'm looking because I think my phone just fell. <laughs> Here we go. I got it. All right. Here we go. Okay, so I want everybody that's online to please repeat this prayer with me. Now I've done the trauma prayer a couple of times and every time it's like going through the Freemasonry prayer, I get more freedom. All right. So I want you to repeat, repeat this prayer um, and make it as a declaration. Right. Okay. Just don't, don't, that's, yeah. Declare it as it's being read. Amen. All right. Jesus, I pray. Jesus, I pray. That you would supernaturally remove, supernaturally remove the hurtful memories, the hurtful memories, and the trauma, and the trauma of past events, of past events, out of my mind, out of my mind, out of my memory, out of my, out of my physical body, and my emotions. I ask that you would lift all remnants of painful events and the trauma that was created as a result 
of that pain and even abuse. Lift it out of every cell of my body. Let me remember only the good about who the enemy used to cause me pain. I'm able to forgive and release those that have hurt me. So let's just take a minute and forgive those that have hurt us. Thank you, Father. We just release those that have hurt us. Yes. Betrayed us. Thank you, Father. And we choose, repeat this after me. We choose to forgive anyone that has caused injury to our soul, spirit, and even physical body. Jesus, heal our ear gate so that we not hear or remember hurtful words and curses spoken to me. Heal my eye gate, things I saw, Father, that weren't from you. Tonight, I release all anger, fear, pain, rejection, and unforgiveness. And I speak now and I declare that painful memories and trauma will not circulate in my mind and my emotions anymore. And I pray that no cell in my body would retain trauma. I am no longer in agreement with the spirit of trauma. Jesus, I ask forgiveness for any doors that I have opened to the enemy. And I renounce and break every unintentional agreement that I may have made with spirits of fear, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, addictions, and inflicting wounds on others. Jesus, I submit to your Holy Spirit and I command all trauma to leave me now. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody take a deep breath. All trauma, all spirits of fear, up and out now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. All right. Okay, Apostle Bob, can you take them through? Amen. Yes, I'm just going to, you can repeat after. I'm going to say this to everyone. Uh, they want to know the Lord, yeah. And and every we can all repeat. Uh, we can all say it uh, together. Or after me, I mean. So just this is for everyone, Lord. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. I repent for things that I have done in the past, and Lord, I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple, Lord. So, Lord, I ask you now to forgive me and come into my heart. Come into my heart, as that song says, come in to stay, not just come in and leave again because I rejected you. So, Lord, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for making me a new creature in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The past is gone. Yes. The new is new, and it's new tonight, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your Thank forgiveness. You, Thank you, Lord, for accepting me into your kingdom. Yes, And I Lord. give you praise and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 All right. Now we'd like to prophesy over a few people. All right. Okay. Um, we're going to prophesy to Tess Simmons. Okay, Tess. Yep, she goes, Amen. <laughs> All right. Shigaraba, Shigaraba, Kiraba. And those that are watching, you know, we say this, uh, we teach this at Christian National. Just because your name is not called, you can actually 
you know, grab that word for yourself. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Tess, I just see that um, God is just uh, changing some things up. I see that uh, some things, uh, the way things used to be, God's just, it's almost like upsetting the apple cart, uh, but in a good way that things are progressing. I see some things that have tried to, as I gave this message tonight about fear, I see that you have struggled with some fear in other areas, but God's releasing that supernatural peace over you and a new boldness over you, Tess. A new boldness is happening in Jesus' name. It's like you're just, you're going to go where no man would go. That's Amen. what I hear. There's a, a new thing for you. And uh, you're going to begin to step out in that place of authority. God's just uh, releasing authority. I should get up my kid about as you say it, so it shall be, says the Lord. So watch what you say. Do not agree uh, or come in agreement or, or partner with what the enemy is doing. Continue to quote my word. The Lord says, and think you'll see things even shift and you can feel even things change instantly, says the Lord, your God. So, Father, mm -hmm. we bless Tess right now tonight, Father, in Jesus name. Give her joy, Father. Give her strength, Father, in Jesus mighty name. Lorena. And, and Lorena Walker. Right now, I hear the Lord saying, even as a lot of these words that were said for Tess are meant for you also, but the Lord is saying today's a new day, it's a new beginning, it's a new it's a new life, literally, and the Lord is saying, even, I, I don't know if you work or not, but uh, where you work, but the Lord is saying, even Monday, there's going to be changes, even in, in uh, your lifestyle, and even in family situations, there's changes coming forth. This week, starting uh, next week, starting Monday, things are going to surprise you. Things you've been asking for are coming forth. The Lord is saying, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to surprise you. And uh, things, like I said, the Lord said, things you've been asking for, it's coming forth starting Monday of next week. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we bless her mightily, Lord, and everything she says and everything she does. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have you pray that. I see somebody, uh, Victoria, we'll pray for you in one minute, but I'm going to go ahead. Apostle Bob's going to pray for you. Um, but uh, for Emmett Robinson, okay. Uh, healing. Restoration. The three R's for you, Emmett. God says, son, I am uh, restoring those things, but I'm returning you to that place uh, of uh, walking in that faith. The Lord says that you were a man of faith and you walked in that in victory, but there's been some things that have happened that I Last few years that have tried to to rob you of your faith but the lord said it's almost like he's giving you a dose like taking a dose of a medicine of faith because the lord says many need the faith that you have many need the prayer uh, that you have and the lord says even um, where there's been some uh, financial difficulties the lord says he's taking care of that the Lord says the blessings are coming. The Lord says that those seeds that you sowed so long ago are coming to harvest. And it's not just like in, in um, money situations, but it's in family situations. But the Lord says, that's my covenant with you, son. Amen. And I'll do Natasha Breville. <clears throat> Natasha, right now, I just see uh, God just breaking yokes of bondage off of you and releasing freedom over you right now in Jesus' mighty name. So I see the freedom coming over you now in Jesus' name. It's almost like you felt like you're always in uh, just the spiral. You like you get so far ahead and, and feel like things are going good. And then there's something else happens and it's like a spiral down. So I break that assignment off of you now. It's, it happens every couple of months and sometimes every couple of years there's, there's patterns. So I break those off of you. I break off every generational curse that would try to open the door for these things. And Natasha, it, there's, um, you've been asking the Lord about direction and the Lord says daughter you hear my voice the Lord says you're going to hear my voice louder and clear because I see you're at a crossroad and you need to make a decision and God says you are going to be led forth with my peace that's what my word says and daughter you do hear me trust that says the Lord your God and for Kevin Engler I'll start and if you want to add and then we'll both okay. pray for her go ahead Kevin Engler I hear the Lord saying, Kevin, in the past, you've been just sitting back and, and I see the vision of you sitting out in a boat, just 
a small boat just rocking in the waves like Jesus did and just uh, rocking and just going along with the flow as the saying goes. But I hear the Lord saying, Kevin, it's time to get out of that boat and start walking on the yes. water. Start doing things that you've never done before. Be, don't worry about if you mess up or anything. The Lord says, I'm with you, I'm behind you, I'm backing yes. you. So don't worry about making a mistake. God, the Lord said, sometimes I made a mistake, but the Lord is saying no for you. Just get out and do it and do it because I have great and mighty things for you to do and where I want you to be. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to make everything clear. Don't worry about finances. I have it all in my hands and, and I am in charge of what is going to happen and what is going on. And don't worry about that family member. That person is in my hands also. And just put your trust in me, not in man, but put your trust in me, Kevin. So the Lord's saying, I'm going to bless you mightily, 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 say the Lord. And Kevin, it's funny. That's not our youngest son's name. So, okay, Kevin. So, but it was funny as Apostle Bob was prophesying over you, um, my um, Apple Watch said, even a minute of breathing can reduce stress. So in the name of Jesus, I break that stress off of you, Kevin. And that heaviness is almost like a yoke around your neck. I break that off now in Jesus mighty name and release peace over you now in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I don't know if uh, Apostle Linda can see what Victoria Miller put, but um, we don't have to read everything, but Apostle Bob, you want to, she needs a miracle. A miracle. Uh, uh, and financial breakthrough miracle. So Lord, we just pray Victoria, that, for Victoria Miller and her family yes, right now, Lord. Oh gosh, she's asking she for a miracle and we believe in miracles. Oh, so right now, she even she Lord, we don't know the situation. We don't know the circumstances. Oh, uh, but being in this hotel, she runs running out of money now tonight. Oh, so we just pray over that right now in the yes. name of Jesus, that the miracle will happen. She'll be able to stay another night or whatever she's asking for, Lord. We don't know the situation. So, God, just take care of her. Take care of her family. Who I know it says her daughter, Lord, just bless her mightily, Lord, and uh, the six-year-old daughter, Lord. So we just pray right now in the name of Jesus. You Thank will you, provide, Father. Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, we just, uh, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, just thank you for all those that were on, Lord God. And Father, you are our provider. You are the healer, Lord God. Uh, Father, even before things are out of our mouth, you've already met the need. So Father, we don't have to... Uh, you said you've not seen your children begging for bread, Lord. So, Father, we trust that every need's going to be met tonight, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. So, Father, I thank you for everyone that is on us, oh Lord God, that they walk in that uh, peace tonight. I thank you that when they lay down tonight, their sleep will be sweet, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And I just see that those that are on, God, you know, the reason you're on tonight, and I know some of you follow um, Covenant Life uh, Church with Apostles Linda and Apostle Jeff, but I'm saying tonight you're on because God wanted to break off that fear. He wanted to break off the trauma. And I believe for testimonies, and you can send those back to Apostle Linda and Apostle Jeff, because there's going to be some testimonies. Amen. I see that there's um, there was shifting. F.F. Um, F. Bosworth taught that there was more people healed when he taught on healing than he actually prayed for. And I believe as we brought revelation Amen. about fear and the torment that tonight that there was just freedom that came. Even the devil didn't stick around because he said, oh no, we've been exposed <laughs> and he left. So we bless you all. And uh, we thank you for all that you uh, uh, are doing for the kingdom, Apostle Linda and Apostle Jeff. You're awesome. Awesome. Thank you Amen. for allowing us to come. And uh, Sunday, we'll bring the word of the Lord, what God is saying, and prophesy some more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. For some reason, we get some uh, feedback. I don't know. So, anyway, bless you both. Thank you for being with us tonight amen and we invite them back sunday at 2 30 amen so oh. we're just gonna end it right there all right good night, everyone okay, okay.